Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about a new journey. As you can see, we've introduced a new piece of equipment. It's the Weber Genesis 4 burner with a griddle attachment. You guys watch this. So how did we get here? Well, honestly, it's because of you guys. We get asked so many questions about griddle grill inserts. The questions kept compounding and compounding. I finally reached out to Weber. I said, I have a list of questions. Um, after going back and forth, they're like, listen, how about we send you a grill with a griddle insert and you can review it and you can get experience on it. So that way you can relay your information to your audience. Um, after going back and forth, we're like, that's not really something that we want to do. Fast forward a couple of days. I thought, you know, if I don't do it, then I feel like I'm not connecting with those people that are asking. We can do you know, griddles by themselves all the time. So I feel like since this is a griddle community, even on Facebook, when we talk about, it doesn't matter what griddle you use or anything like that. It's all about the recipes. Same thing with griddle inserts or griddles, right? It's all inclusive. So, you know, whether you have a griddle or a plancha for a charcoal pellet or gas grill, that's what we're here for. So it's all about the griddles. So that kind of puts the ball in my court, right? About the pressure of getting the information to you accordingly. So we're gonna treat it like any other griddle. We're gonna do the pros and cons. We're gonna heat it up on low, see what we get out of it. Heat on high, see what we get out of it. Probably test the temperatures around the griddle and put it through its paces. I'm not gonna give it any special treatment just like I would any other griddle just cause it's an insert. Um, one important aspect seemed like it kind of like shined a light on the griddle insert was many different factors. It was like, you're looking to get more bang for your buck. If you have a gas grill, or you don't have anything, you wanna get a gas grill, then buy a griddle insert. Um, or you already have a gas grill, you see the popularity, or you just like the idea of a griddle, you could add that to your gas grill as well. Or the fact you're living on space, they all play a big part, and I feel like that's where we are getting all the questions back and forth. Do you like it? How well does it perform? Would you recommend this over a standalone griddle? Can it be just as good as a griddle? So just for clarification, I got it for free. Um, to be able to give you guys the information that we do, like we do with every single model that we do. Uh, really quickly in this video, I'm just gonna give you kind of like maybe some features of the grill. Um, I know it's not more about the grill than it is the griddle. I'm not here to review the grill. Um, I did have the option of a three or four burner. Um, I've always said that when we preach griddles, I like the idea of a four burner, especially for the real estate space. The reason is, is because you can do so much with it. And I feel like it's the same thing with a gas grill. If you're going to spend the money to combine the two options, you're going to either try to conserve the money and get a bang for your buck with one model, or you're limited on space. And I think that's really where a four burner will shine. Um, with that being said, let's just do a quick look around the grill to see the features, and then we'll get to the griddle. As you can see, the design is extremely different than their griddle. All right, when we built it, just showing you inside. I don't know how hard we can get into. There's a shelf right here. There is a propane tank sensor here. It's got this little red tab. If you close the door, that actually gives you a visual on the outside as the propane lessens. This will rise and kind of give you a quick gauge of your propane on the inside. This is also a place where your battery uh, goes in and then all your power connectors go in there. This is not run off of house power, but these are all your igniter connections, okay? Uh, if we're just gonna keep going up, this shelf is gonna be very, very, very useful to us because as you can see, all the catchings are supposed to run down here. For the griddle. For the griddle. Using the, the well, for the grill and the griddle. Why that's important is because one thing I've already worried about is this is your grease trap, okay? I'm sure it's okay. I'm sure they've thought of it. Uh, maybe, you know, an inch deeper or something like that, especially for the griddle function. We're gonna have to play with it and see. Definitely one that you don't wanna leave in there. I would recommend, even before I even doing it, or before I do it, that you guys need to keep an eye on your grease trap uh, your grease tank, whatever it's called, your grease bucket, before you start seriously griddling. If you're just doing a grilled cheese, ain't gonna matter. 
you're doing a big breakfast like what we're about to do with sausage grease, bacon grease, hash brown grease, you name it, that might be important along with washing or um, deglazing your griddle when all that water comes off. So just fair warning on that. We have four burners along with a sear burner. That could be especially useful if we're trying to limit or engage different temperatures on the griddle. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, there's uh, these grates here we're gonna end up taking off. It's got a shelf that I think is pretty neat. Folds down, folds up. Honestly, this is what I wish the Halo would have because since you can use the hood for cooking, you maximize your space. That's one thing that I said um, in the original video of Halo that I thought would be beneficial for everybody because you're allowed to use that extra space. But really quickly, if you just raise it up and turn it down, now all of a sudden you can have it completely out of the way while st still being inside there. Um, I did not get the one that has the smart display on it. It'll have probes that come up in here. I have plenty of aftermarket things. For me, it's more about griddle than it was all the grill itself. I just didn't feel like it was necessary for me. Um, you got the thermometer inside. It's got the insulated hood. And overall, I mean, you can see the color combination is very, very, very well thought of. I love the red. Um, I'm surprised at the space. Um, it's, oh, a, it's a beast. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a not the space. I'm surprised how big it is. I did not expect it to be this big. I haven't even seen one in public. And I was just shocked at the at that. It does have a side burner, which I think is going to be pretty cool to use if we're griddling. And I'm not even using this grill at or griddle at the same time. We could reduce a sauce or something like that on the side. Just an option. Uh, right here is really cool. It's got extra storage for like sheet trays, uh, cutting boards, whatever you want to use. That little cup right here. Um, it is, uh, it's not like the Weber griddle where you turn it on and automatically turns on. You just turn it to your ignite button, press ignite, and then it ignites. Okay. Did I miss anything? Nope. Oh, forecaster wheels. You guys know I love my forecaster wheels. I was extremely excited to see that. It's got your two big brakes on the front. All right, so what we're going to do right now is attach the griddle. Uh, in the box, it came with a little scraper. Um, and then when you pull your grease trap out, it's supposed to be used to be able to scrape your stuff down like this and get it cleaner. Okay, it's very lightweight. It just sits on a shelf. You could take it out completely to clean it if you need to. Oh, that whole black piece, you mean? Yes. This does come separate. It is an extra add-on. So it lays in there nice and easy. Um, your grease will catch here. This is where you'll just funnel the grease to. So this is one of those things you definitely wanna make sure as far as I know, you cannot adjust this because the wheels snap in. They do not twist. Um, so adjusting your griddle, if you want the grease to drain to the back accordingly, would be uh, beneficial. Um, it does have a lip in the front all the way around the sides to catch the grease. But the thing that shocked me was something we did off camera. And let me show you really quick, just by the quick math. Here's the three burner. I know it's not the four burner. I know this is just all I have. I was shocked, okay? Just hear me out, okay? So the cooking surface here is 28 inches by 18 inches. And if you do the math, it is like 504 square inches. I think so, yeah. Okay. And if you come over here, you basically, I'm just doing it to the inside of this. So 14 inches by uh, 32 and a half inches, which is about 355. I thought it was 455. This is more than that. Oh, oh yeah, 455. Yeah, it's about 50 square inches less. So you are getting a little less square, square inches than that, but it surprised me how many square inches you are getting. Um, when you actually hold it up without the grill, it seems a lot smaller. That's just my opinion. Yeah, but then when you put it on here, it seems, it seems bigger. bigger. <laughs> yep. And just to give you an idea, if you're looking at this, remember this is a four burner, 68 and a quarter inches. With that being said, we're gonna start the seasoning process. I'm gonna wash the griddle down. Uh, this is extremely smooth. Um, it looks like it's already pre-seasoned. I'm just gonna wash it down with soapy water, get it cleaned off, dried, and then we're gonna start the seasoning process. All right. So 
So the maiden voyage, we're gonna go on, hit that button, because we learned on the Blackstone. <laughs> Maybe one of us did. I learned. <laughs> All right, I did not turn the sear zone on yet. I'm gonna work with that a little bit later, probably not even this video. Right now I've got it all on low, but these holes right here are to put your lighter in there just in case your igniter does not work. I was wondering what those holes are for. I'm sure it lets some of the air escape through there. That's for one, two. It says preheat your griddle to 450 to 500 degrees, monitor the temperature during the process and stay within 450 to 500 degrees for 30 minutes. The griddle does come pre-seasoned. It recommends seasoning it two times. We might do three or four. It's very smooth to start with, so I, I, I definitely think it's seasoned. Uh, we're gonna get the gun out, shoot it, and see what kind of temps we got. I'm gonna keep the lid open for now, uh, just because I do think there might be some, you know, some different configurations that we can do. Uh, but as always, I think the, the right thing to do is just turn on low, let the heat build for a minute. We'll crank it up about, um, about a, like a high, shoot the temperature gun, see how fast we get there, and then start working way down if we need to. All right, about 10 minutes in, I just gunned it. Um, you guys be like, I, I love my low temperatures. I love them because then you can adjust from there. We've been over it. Um, here we go, so come on, get off there. Can you see the thing? Oh, right there. Yeah. Okay, so can you see it? Yeah. It's just a little shadowy. It looks very even, 275 to 303. All right, so now, now, now that you're not filming, I don't think we hit over 300 degrees on low after a 10 minute preheat time. 283, 303, 284. So about a 12, 10 to 12 minute preheat time, we're in like basically just breaking to 300s. And that's all burners on low. <sighs> that's a sweet spot in it we're going to turn it on high because now we need to get in the seasoning process i will adjust my temperature as needed um, i think i learned a lesson from the the halo which was completely my fault that just because it says that you can turn it on a high doesn't necessarily mean you should so i'm going to give it about uh five minutes and once we hit that about 4 30 ish mark somewhere through there we're gonna start seasoning but to be 300 degrees on low I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. 415, 450, and 415. So, you know, that's not bad. I mean, we can live with that. At least you know that the power alley is right in the middle, which on a lot of griddles, that's the case. So I'm not surprised. Um, we're gonna shoot for two coats, see what it looks like. Got some uh, grape seed oil. That's been my go-to lately. It probably will not take as much oil to season um, because it's already pre-seasoned. So remember, you're going to season it front and uh, all through the sides. You got that back plate back there. You're not looking for any pulls. Thin coats. We're a good 20 minutes in without the lid closed. And we're just heating the uh, 475 to 490 mark, somewhere through there. The smoke's starting to roll. All right, so the first thing I've noticed is since the griddle is already seasoned, it's not necessarily taking the seasoning the way I thought it would. There's a lot of beating on there, which means you probably have a little bit too much oil, so make sure you get that off of there. Instead of waiting for the smoke to dissipate, you might have to wipe it off through the process. Um, I've easily added uh, another coat just by how many times I've wiped it. But there is one thing I want to mention, okay? We always talk about the sides of the griddle, how hot they get. We have a good and a bad. If you notice through here on both sides, you have an open gap because of the way the grill sits inside there, okay? That does get hot. You can feel the heat coming from there. But the dang metal is not that hot, about 140 degrees right yeah I mean, but once you get something high this protects it a little bit but once you get over here if you have a water bottle here that would burn it would burn in a hurry because you have the open the open flames coming out you know like right here same thing with this side the shelf is extremely cool to the touch it's basically 
less hot than what my asphalt is right now being 100 degrees. <laughs> but I'm sure if you set the bottle, here's a perfect example. If you set the bottle like that, it's going to melt. But if you have it over here, or if you had something laid down here, you're, you're good to go. There's no reason to worry. So you're just using the same paper towel because it already has the residual oil in it. Yes. It's hard to see. There. How can we do that? I know, it's hard to see. With you need the... to get better at filming. 493, 498, 529, 490. Right, so that middle, that middle, and that's without the sear on. So what that tells us is 500 to 525, 550 might be the max on this, which is fine. That's extremely hot enough. Um, the griddle is an afterthought. I couldn't imagine anybody buying this unit and just being like, I'm using the griddle only. Um, so when it comes to steaks or anything that you want grilled, I could imagine you'd probably want to use a grill for it. I would. I've always said I'd pick charcoal over gas or gas or smoke or pellet or something besides a griddle steak. I'm not a fan of griddle steak. We did break this grill in with some really good steaks. <laughs> I get asked all the time, are you supposed to add onions to your griddle while you're seasoning it? Personal preference, I don't, but if you guys want me to, we will, we'll try it out. Remember this griddle is already seasoned, but never hurts. Just by working the onions around, getting used to the griddle, this area right here where that heat comes through, whoo, hot, it's hot. You want, probably wouldn't want to leave your spatula right there. No, no. I don't think it's necessary to do a bread test because I feel like the unit itself is so even. We've demonstrated that. We're gonna to try to use all the features on the grill, maybe make a sausage gravy from the eye, uh, maybe somehow do an elevated rack with a dome system since it is a lid. Maybe maybe do some biscuits. We got hash browns. We got bacon. We got sausage. We got eggs. Be a good breakfast. I got the griddle to about 310 degrees. 300. I might have to turn it back on. We'll turn it back on real quick. Uh, the point is just to see if the egg temperature. Because I always like to cook my eggs with butter. I always say the sweet spot's about 300 degrees. We'll see what it looks like when it cooks. See that? Yep. That's what I, that's honestly what I thought. It's so bright. The whole thing looks white on the camera. But there you go. There you go. Yeah, so that's a good egg. We can, it's not even cooked yet. You can see how it's sliding around. So that does go to show you how well seasoned this griddle is. I mean, the hood's a little warm, but I mean, it's not like, I'm actually surprised at how cool the stainless steel is, the hood's not even, I mean, it's hot. I wouldn't hold it, but it's interesting. All right, my final thoughts, exact opposite of what I expected. I honestly expected this thing to cook too hot um, because being a gas grill, I know we didn't have the lid, lid open, but with all the BTUs it has, um, just my misunderstanding of what it could do. Surprisingly, I cannot believe it was that low on low, right? Uh, the Weber griddle, the reason why it stays on the deck is because it's able to hit about 350 degrees consistently on low as long as I've got it on. Like it really doesn't build heat as much as you would think it would. Um, for this to hover around 300, maybe 310 degrees on low, I'm baffled. Uh, to crank up the temperature all the way on high, when I said vice versa, I'm surprised it only got up to 500 degrees on high. I was expecting maybe 600, 650, somewhere like that. But with the lid closed, we might be able to hit those temperatures. I'm not exactly sure what we'll to play around with it. But, but do you actually want to hit 650? With the griddle, probably not. And that's going to be my next thing. What you want it to do versus reality is two different things. I'm glad you asked that. I mentioned this before. You're probably buying this grill or looking at a grill like this, whether it be this brand or another brand for the grill itself because that's where the money value is at the added value is when you add your accessories adding the griddle i think when you're looking at this grill so far is a is a home run obviously i'm biased towards griddles as you can tell the channel but more importantly i do think that it that it creates a whole nother genre of griddles that most people aren't even aware of um like i said we'll follow this up with the uh with the big breakfast, I'm super excited about it. 
And um, do you have anything else? I'm out. I guess I'm, the, the bottom line is I'm impressed by the grill itself because it's been a long time since I had one. I did not expect it to be this big. It's um, a nice grill. <laughs> it is a nice grill. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I just didn't expect it. Like, so it kind of wowed me. Uh, it did take a while to put together. I definitely recommend two people, um, especially putting the, the base, the top unit in. Um, and then once we got it on, we played with it. I, I just cannot believe it hit 300 or 310 and stayed there for what? 12 15 minutes i mean that's impressive that's that's when you can adjust the temperatures and that's what i feel like griddle cooking should be about you control your griddle Whoo! a lot of experiments all right guys if you're interested we have a join button down below to membership program we thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so you can check us out on the griddle group on facebook ironically that's where all griddles all shapes all sizes all brands and all unique features get discussed and that's how we got in this journey to begin with Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends.